Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial, we're going to look at break and continue in the context of loops in C++. Uh, so before we move on from loops, we've got a couple of statements that can be very useful in some programs in loops and can help you to simplify your code. So for an example, let's, let's take a for loop. So I'm going to type for int i equals zero. And we can also use for and for, uh, sorry, continue and break with while loops and do while loops as well. Let's say i less than uh, five and i plus plus. So let's let's put something in here so we can see what's happening. Let's say c out i is and i and I'll have an endler. So we'll check that this works. I'm going to run that. We need to build it first, project build project, and run it. There we go. So we've got i is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, now the first and um, probably the most useful of these statements is break. Um, so what break does is it jumps immediately out of the loop which um, is yeah, it's sometimes useful because sometimes in your, your for loop, it's, it's probably more often used with while loops, but even in a for loop, you might have some extra condition which occurs within the loop, which makes you want to break out of the loop. And you could add that condition um, up here. You could have an and clause or whatever in there. But um, sometimes it just makes for more elegant code if you check some condition within the loop. And if that condition occurs, you break out of the loop. Let's say, for example, if i is equal to 3, break. So as soon as, we, as soon as this code executes, the loop's going to stop executing. We're going to break out of it. And even if there's anything underneath here, we're not going to see it. Um, Loop, let's say looping dot dot dot. So break is going to immediately jump out of these bra enclosing brackets and do whatever's after the loop. Let's put here uh, program quitting dot dot dot. So if if we run this program, so I click run and we get i is zero and and, and it says looping, and then i is 1, looping, i is 2, i is 3. But when i is 3, this condition says, yeah, i is 3, and it breaks. And then notice we don't get this looping after that. So after 3, here it doesn't say looping. Break is literally shot straight out of the loop, and then we we're on to the stuff that's after the loop. And be careful that uh, when you have like nested brackets within brackets, always put that extra tab indentation in here. So here I've got an if nested within my for, nested within the um, main subroutine. So the, the, all the statements within main are indented by one tab. Within for, all the statements are indented by an extra tab. And within this if, which has its own curly brackets, we've indented the break by another tab. And that's, that's really important to keep your code um, readable. So that's, um, that's break. Let's maybe copy this code and um, paste it down here. So what I'll do is I'll comment this out uh, because I don't, I don't want to use it anymore here, but I want you to be able to refer to it if you download the source code. So I'm just going to um, comment this out with a slash star star slash. Let's just use the auto formatter here. Um, in fact, the, the auto formatter is strangely um, not indented the break. Um, usually you should indent stuff within if, but I guess the formatter feels that break should be an exception. But I'm going I'm to put it back anyway because uh, it looks a bit odd to me. Um, yeah, so um, continue is it's a little bit similar to break, uh, but it just kind of breaks um, the current iteration of the loop and then goes on to the next iteration. So if we have continue in here instead, what's going to happen is we're not going to execute any statements after continue. It's going to break out of that particular iteration of the loop, but then it is going to carry on with the following iterations. 
So if we look at this now, then we get i is 1, i is 2, i is 3. And after i is 3, when we do the continue, we don't execute the statements that come after continue. So there's no looping after i is 3. But unlike break, it then does go on to do the rest of the iterations of the loop. So we get i is 4 and it says looping. So that's, that's continue. Um, what I want to do in the rest of this tutorial is show you just like one usage maybe of break so you can see how it can be useful. Let's take the code from, um, from the do while tutorial. Uh, so here I've got this program that repeatedly asks the user to enter their password until they finally enter the right password. So I'm going to copy all this stuff and paste it in here. Let's just format that. Yeah, continue is also not being indented. Usually you should, like if I had another statement in here, like C out, let's put C out, hello, hello. Let's just, let's just do that and then just format that. I'll save it first. Well, that's pretty weird. The, the formatter here is, yeah, the reason is that um, I now see because I've commented it out. If I don't comment it out and I use the formatter, you can see that it does indent stuff correctly. But because I've got this stuff in, in a comment, it's um, the auto formatter is not doing what I expected it to do. So let, let's just indent those manually for the moment. Um, so that, that looks good. I'll get rid of this actually. That's, that's a bit weird, but I guess um, the format is just not geared up for code within comments, so never mind. Okay, um, so yeah, we, we've got this program that's, that asks for a password um, repeatedly, and um, we can simplify this using break. So here we, we've got, we're checking this condition twice, that we're checking if the input is equal to the password or not, twice, here and here. Now what we could do here is we could change this while condition to true. So now this is an infinite loop, but we can break the loop with break. So let, let's say if input is equal to password, then we say break. Let's put the closing bracket in there. There we go. Else, so if the input is not equal to the password, then we say access denied and we continue. Uh, so just, just by using the break statement there, I made it a, li a little bit clearer and I've, I've avoided having to repeat um, the condition twice. So I think that looks good. Let's, let's check it and see if it works. So as soon as the input's equal to the password, we're going to break out of what would otherwise be an infinite loop. So I'm going to run that. Enter your password. Let's try garbage, garbage, garbage. Hello. Access denied. Well, it's case sensitive. Let's type hello, lowercase. And it says program quitting. Also said password accepted. So um, just a little example there of, of how break can simplify your code. And same for continue. I think break's probably more common. Now, if you want to practice this, what I'd recommend is first, write a little program, uh, write just a little demo like, like uh, what I did earlier in this tutorial, checking that you understand break and do the same for continue. And then take this uh, code from uh, the do while tutorial and um, try to modify it yourself with a break. Or if you can think of a way to use a continue in there that makes it nicer, by all means do. But try to use break or continue in there to simplify the code like I've done. And try to do it from memory without referring back to this code. But if you do need to refer back, then no shame in that. But um, it's good if you, if you have a go at it first. Try to get it working yourself from memory. And then even if you end up referring back to this code, that will help you um, uncover the deficits in your understanding. And it will help you to get to grips with this. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial, and until next time, happy coding.